the New Orleans Saints. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown. Well, the New Orleans Saints have beaten Tampa five straight times. The last four coming right here in New Orleans. And again today, the Young Bucks are big underdogs. Working with me is my partner, former Chicago Bears safety, Gary Fensick. And Gary, what in the world can these young Buccaneers do to change this trend? Well, in order to build...
So Mo Hill puts the Saints on top. New Orleans leads it by a touchdown. Mo Hill with the sure hands in the end zone gives the Saints a 7 0 lead. 8.25 remaining in the first quarter. And Anderson kicks it off high. This is Donnie Elder at the six. And Donnie Elder for the Bucks gets it near the 22 yard line. Ryan Ford, Ford on the stop for the Saints. 12 play scoring drive, covered 70 yards, 537. Bobby A. Bear, five yard pass to Mo Hill. Key play against Tampa Bay, the penalty against Robert Pig Golf. Help New Orleans set it up. Not an unusual start for Tampa Bay, giving up this many points for the score on first. Coming into the game, it had been 44 to nothing. Now 51 nothing. Tampa being outscored in the first quarter, and this is Testaverde complete to Mark Carrier. Enough for the first down across the 35 to about the 37-yard line, a 14-yard pickup. That's one person you want to find today. Mark Carrier last year had eight catches for 212 yards. He's also from the area. He's from Church Point, Louisiana. And he has 130 people here watching him today. <laughs> a lot of fans cheering him on. And that's a lot of money if you had to pay for all those tickets. First and 10 for the Bucks at their own 37. Benny. Intended receiver again was Carrier. I'll tell you who made that play last. That play was made by number 29, Reggie Sutton. He jammed him at the line of scrimmage, almost knocked him off his feet. Certainly legal within that five yards of the line of scrimmage. Sutton today is starting in place of Dave Waymer. Waymer having a rough go of it last week. And this is a big opportunity for Reggie Sutton. Brings up second and 10 for Tampa Bay. Testa Verde back to pass. Good time. Accepted by Gene Atkins. Let me tell you why those guys are all fighting because the tie goes to the offense and they're all fighting and pushing and shoving to make sure that the defensive guy or the offensive guy, whoever they're for, ends up with the ball. I'll tell you what, a lot of a lot of balls change hands at the bottom of those piles depending on who's stronger. If you're a tie goes to the offense. If, if you're the defensive player, you've got to wrestle control of that ball before you hit the ground or be smart enough or strong enough to make sure that when the everybody's taken off that pile that you end up with the ball. It's a great break, both fighting for it, haul the tight end. Strong safety actions. He's fighting for it, you see, but you've got to have control of the ball, and if it's a tie, it's definitely going to go to the offensive player. Makes it third and four. Tampa Bay, three wide outs in. Testa Verde, complete to Wilder out of the backfield for a first down across midfield to the 45. Run out of bounds by Ricky Jackson. They blitzed the safety on that play, and Ricky Jackson told me several weeks ago that he has not been beat man-to-man -man by a running back since 1986. And today, I saw him get beat by a running back on a blitz pickup, and it took a great catch by number 32, James Wilder, and he catches a lot of balls just like that. And Wilder having a fine season so far. First and 10 for the Bucks at the 44 of New Orleans. Testa Verde escapes Swilling's grasp and is going deep. And it's off the helmet of Bruce Hill, who wants pass interference. Well, Reggie Sutton slipped and fell. It could have been a touch, and now they're going at it in the secondary. See, Bruce Hill, he didn't like that. He's not going to take any of it. Brett Maxey doing a little join. You know, you saw some talking on the Saints touchdown, and it looks as though these guys are just going to make sure that, hey, I'm tougher than you guys. Swilling comes in untouched. Look at that. Swilling missed an opportunity for an easy sack. And <laughs> I'll tell you what, he 
just didn't get his hands up, but he got tripped up with Sutton, who lost control on the turf. Second and ten for Tampa Bay. Testaverde back to pass again. And this one is intercepted by Van Jakes. Jakes still on his feet. from Kent State with the interception. I gotta tell you something, we're talking about the linebackers. This secondary has been getting criticized because they're not tough enough. This is a great break on the ball by Van Jakes. He wanted it more than Hill did. And not only is it a great interception, but this guy's running for six right here. What he's gotta be disappointed is that a tight end catches him. Ron Hall prevents him from walking in for a touchdown. A 39-yard return by Van Jakes. Ball at the 31 of Tampa. First and 10 for New Orleans. Bear complete for Big John Tice. And John Tice pulls his way to the first down near the 15-yard line. A 16-yard pickup by John Tice. Bobby Bear saw the blitz coming, pointed to the wide receiver. He ran a quick in with the wide receiver and a quick out pattern by Tice. Boy, I'll tell you what, he's 250 pounds and it's tough to bring him down. He's replacing Hobie Brenner, who's missed now two weeks in a row because of an abdominal strain in his stomach. Well, I guess it has to be his stomach, doesn't it? Tice caught two touchdowns last season against Tampa Bay. First and 10, ball at the park at the 15 of the Bucks. The handoff to Hilliard. And Hilliard, when it looked as if he was stopped, still goes for it for a couple of yards. Winston Moss on the tackle. All right, you're Tampa Bay. You know that you've had a rough start. You haven't scored in the first quarter. Your defense has to stick it up right here, get it going, and make some big plays. Moss made a nice stop there. Coming to you from the Superdome here in New Orleans, Louisiana. James Brown along with Gary Fensick. First quarter action here. Saints leading it. Seven to nothing, second and nine. For the Saints, ball mark at the 14 of Tampa Bay. This is Hilliard. And Hilliard with good outside speed. A flag is on a play. Run out of bounds by Ricky Reynolds. There is a flag on the play. The preliminary signal by Fred Silva against the Saints holding. Holding number 61. 10 yards, still second down. That's Joel Hilgenberg. Hilgenberg is in the middle of your screen, number 61. Bucks are showing blitz, and they blitz both inside linebackers. Hilgenberg is pulling. Can't really see whether or not he's holding, but. Those referees see him tackle right there. The defensive back coming up on contain. Must have been Mark Robinson, the strong safety. Penalty makes it second and 19. At the 24 of the Bucks. Hebert inside hand off the knee. And Dalton Hilliard, he of the shifty moves, down to the 10 yard line. In on the tackle. And the Tampa Bay players thinking that he fumbled. The question, I guess, here, Gary, is whether he was down by contact. We've got a five man rush. Everybody's spread out wide, and it's a draw play to Hilliard. But this is awfully tough because you've got four wide receivers on third down. You take a look, I think the contact was by the ground. Good call by the referees. Brings up a third and six for the Saints. Ball marked at the 11 of Tampa Bay. And the officials stop the play. They're going to review this upstairs in the replay booth. You know, we were saying, second and long, brought in four wide receivers. That spreads your defense way wide. And then you have one, one back in there, and he runs a draw play. Everybody's spreading. He just runs for daylight. 
Look at Dalton Hilliard here. Looks as though he gets tackled here by Harry Hamilton. He's going down. And the helmet comes in. Can't tell the can't really tell from this angle whether or not that ball hit the ground or not, but the replay officials are saying it's the Saints ball. Same thing you said, inconclusive, so the Saints have it. Ball marked at the 11, third and six. Amen. Back to pass. Looking for Clark. Robert Clark covered by Ricky Reynolds. So that'll bring up a field goal situation for the Saints. Morton Anderson comes on a kick to attempt the field goal. They certainly had the opportunity on that one to get the first down. Robert Clark, number 89, just ran a little inside pattern and couldn't hold on to the ball. And Anderson is four of four from this distance. This will be a 28-yard field goal attempt. It's up. And it's good. So the Saints come away with the field goal. And three more points to that lead. Saints lead it by 10. Today, outside of the Superdome, members of the Houdat Saints fan club passing out the signs with their name Houdat. And inside, we now have a sellout crowd here in the Superdome. And one of their rhythmic cheers goes, Houdat, say Houdat, when I say Houdat. They like what they see so far. Tampa Bay has not scored this season in the first quarter. But more importantly, they're a young team. They need to get their confidence up. You're down 10 to nothing. This is going to be a very important series for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Gordon Anderson gets it high. At the six is Donnie Elder. Elder across the 20. And an excellent return by Donnie Elder, third year player from Memphis State. A 34 yard kickoff return by Donnie Elder. And Green Bay is ahead in early action against the Bears. Boy, Minnesota continuing on the roll after beating the Bears last week. Benny Testaverde comes out three of eight thus far in the game, 33 yards, one interception. A real baptism by fire. This is only his eighth NFL start. His team trailing 10 nothing. First quarter action here, 4-14 remaining in the first. Bruce Hill in motion. This is the rookie, Lars Tate. And Tate running hard. Gain of about four. You see last week his stats, but the big play was he flipped over the offensive line and kept on running for a touchdown. It gave him the lead. They have eventually lost against Phoenix last week. And of course, Ray Perkins says that Lars Tate, a rookie out of Georgia, is a player that has to make an impact if that offense is going to roll the way he wants it to this season. Five-yard gain makes it second and five for the Bucks at their own 44. This is Wilder. That was James Wilder's first carry of the ball game. You know, most offensive lines early in the ball game, they want to run the ball to establish a tempo. They want to see how the guy they're going to next to or across from is going to hit him and play him. Is he going to be physical? Is he going to play finesse, soft? So far, this offensive line has not had that opportunity from a run standpoint to develop the momentum and the tempo that they want. They've got a good young offensive line. I'm sure they want to establish it this series. Gain of three, third and two. Testaverde, back to pass. Across to Bruce Hill, he's got it. And Hill takes it to the 35 of New Orleans for the first down. An 18-yard pass play from Vinny Testaverde to Bruce Hill. You know what I didn't like about that play? One, third and two, it's all right to pass. But watch how tentatively Testaverde throws that ball. And it's almost intercepted, deflected, and then almost picked off by Reggie Sutton. And instead, Bruce Hill got the ball. Made a nice play of it. It was a nice conceived play, but again, I'd like to see Testa Verde be a little more disciplined as Ray Perkins said he needed to be. 
Will's first catch, first down at the 35 of New Orleans. Lars Tate with a gain of two, stopped by Frankie Warren. Nobody makes their living running the ball up the gut against New Orleans Saints. It's kind of like a prize fighter. You just want to punch and punch him, but you know that you can't get you can't get to the goal line running through that middle with Tony Elliott and the rest of those linebackers in front three. And especially with a couple linebackers with some rather strange nicknames. We'll talk about that in a second. Second and eight. This is Wilder. And Wilder now near the 30-yard line. Pat Swilling on the stop. Gain of three on the play. Well, we talked about how good and active these linebackers are. Swilling and Jackson not only are very good at blitzing, but you talked to both those guys. Like, oh, you're not going to get to the Pro Bowl unless you unless you get your sacks. But they take great pride in being able to cover backs out of the backfield and also be able to stop the run, which they did that time. And as we saw Milton not come onto the field, this is the penny formation of New Orleans. You heard of the nickel and the dime. This is the penny. Third and six. Testaverde going up top, and it's complete. Great catch by Kerry Goo out of Alabama, the rookie. We talked about this penny defense. You've got three linebackers in the middle, and they're coming. You see Swilling at the left of your screen. Seems to be a coverage mistake. Two guys trying to chase him down. And Kerry Good, if he'd caught that right, he would have run in for a touchdown. Van Jake's on the tackle. A 21-yard pass play from Testaverde to Good Gives Tampa a first down. We talked about how important this series was. And so far, the Buccaneers are responding to the challenge. They've got 39 seconds to score in the first quarter. I bet you they want to erase that goose egg right now. On first and goal, straight ahead. A yard gain on the play by James Wilder. Pat Swilling in on the stop. 32 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Tampa Bay trying to get on the scoreboard. They trail 10-0. And time is being called on the field. And Gary, I'm not quite sure why. No flags on the play. And Fred Silva signals start the clock. Well, I'm surprised the clock is at 16 seconds. They need, they should get a fresh 30 after that. An administrative stop. Second and goal, ball at the nine. Testaverde has to scramble. Goes up top in the end zone for Bruce Hill and overthrows him. So that'll be it. The end of the first quarter, Testaverde looking for Bruce Hill at the back of the end zone. And the Bucks trail the Saints at the end of one by 10. Start of the second quarter here at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Saints leading the Tampa Bay Bucks 10 0. And Gary, the Saints with a third and goal ball mark on the nine. Make that the Bucks. Third and goal, ball at the nine. This is Bruce Hill in motion. To Wilder, out of the backfield, and Wilder still on his feet inside the five, down near the three-yard line. James Wilder showing his brute strength. Good tackle there by Sutton, even though he didn't stop him completely. He hit him enough and forced Wilder to go out of bounds and prevent him from scoring a touchdown. The Buccaneers are going to have to go for a field goal. Bucks haven't been in this territory very often this season, Gary, inside the 20. That's their problem. They've done very well once they've gotten inside the 20. You see there, two TDs, two field goals, but they've only had five opportunities. And that isn't very many for three games. So Donald Igwe Buike will come in to attempt the field goal for the Bucks. There's a flag on the play. 
Looks like the clock ran out on the Bucks. Too much time on the play. Delay, number one on the kicking team. Still going to be fourth down. Oh, I hate when those kickers delay the game like that. Big <laughs> way Weekay has never missed inside the 35 yard line. I hate to jinx him. We'll see how he does today. Well, this is a chip shot for him. Ray Perkins says he's down on kicker. He knows his last name. From the 25. And Igwe Buike is good with the 25-yard field goal. And Tampa Bay is on the scoreboard, trailing in the second quarter by seven. Start by New Orleans. Put them out in front 10-0, but Tampa Bay in the second quarter comes back with the field goal. 10 plays, 59 yards, took 435. And Donald Igwe Buike with the 25-yard field goal. And Gary, you seem to think that's a, a real plus for Tampa Bay. The New Orleans got off to a 10-zip start, and that was a big drive for the Buccaneers to score. They didn't get it in the first quarter, so they're still scoreless in the first quarter, but they did score to stay down just one touchdown. And for a young team, confidence very important. Igwe Buike with a low kick. Picked up at the 10-yard line. Across the 40. Picks up a squib kick. He's made the most of his opportunities since he took over last week for Antonio Gibson. Get some great blocks. See Hayward trying to lead on number 34. And he gives the same offense great field position. Now it's up for the defense for the Buccaneers to take away this momentum. Stay within seven points. Ball at the 32 of Tampa Bay. First and 10. This is Dalton Hillier. And Hillier stopped by Kevin Murphy, two-yard gain. Good job that time by the Buccaneer defense. They flipped the strong safety, Mark Robinson, and allowed the play to go wide rather than go north and south like you want to. Gene Look, Atkins. Gene Atkins. Again, as I said, he started for Antonio Gibson, who's on a 30-day drug suspension. And he's played very well in that secondary. He played last year when Gibson broke his arm. This is Craig Hayward. And Ironhead bullying straight ahead. He's got the right side of the 25. And you know, he's he's feeling the pain. You know, you get the umpire, and he's located right behind the, the defensive line. And listen to this crowd. They love to see it. They Dave have Hamilton, the umpire, <laughs> goes down, gets run right over, and now he gets a feel of what it's like to be run over by a 265-pound rookie. You gotta shake it off. You know, bend over a little bit, get your head. Watch Hayward. Changes his number to 34 this week, but look at that. It's a wave drill. He's the wave. Everybody else is like a surfer, and look at the umpire get run over along with everybody else. On third and one, this is Dalton Hillier. And Hillier. From here, looks. And I was wrong earlier, but this time I can tell you he didn't get the first down. <laughs> Good penetration by the left side of the Buccaneer defense. They responded to the challenge. This is something that Perkins is very concerned about. He wants some crazies on that team. He says he doesn't have them now. He's going to find them somewhere. But they're playing very inspired. Great defense that time on that change. Brings up a fourth down. Field goal attempt by Morton Anderson. We've got two very good kickers here. Igwe Buike and Morton Anderson. This will be a 41-yard attempt. He's good from 28 or 28. And this one is up. And it's good. So Morton Anderson bangs through a 41-yard field goal. And the Saints move out in front by 10. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Centers. United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Subaru, we built our reputation by building a better car. So Morton Anderson's 
41 yard field goal adds to the Saints pad 13 to 3 over Tampa Bay 12 31 remaining in the first half and Gary you are very familiar with this field I believe it was back in 1985 you enjoyed uh, success here well, James this is a great place for a Super Bowl to be played and you know, going against the Patriots when I was with the Bears, it uh, worked out as well, probably even better than we ever anticipated. So, yeah, the Superdome will always have great memories to move. And Anderson gets an excellent kick away. And Donnie Elder gets a touchback for the Bucks. Bucks will bring it out to their own 20. Got a good SEC battle coming up in college football next week here on CBS. Next Saturday on CBS Sports, the seventh ranked LSU Tigers. Will take on the 20th ranked Florida Gators in their Heisman Open. Sophomore running sensation Emmett Smith, and he's a good one. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate. And a lot of yards, just 160 plus, I believe. But LSU will not be ranked number seven next week. Also, Kyle State is a heck of a game, heck of a comeback. I'm sure they'll be red hot when they take on Florida Gators in Florida and Gainesville. Next Saturday, right here on CBS. Bruce Hill in motion on first down. For the Bucks at their own 20. This is Kerry Good. And Good hit hard by Gene Atkins. And Atkins stood him up. It's a smile on your face. You like that kind of hitting? I tell you what, that, uh, that was a great open field tackle. Just got low, drove him, lifted him up. At least when he scores, the Packers on top of the Bears. Minnesota, man, I'll tell you what, they want to win the NFC Central. Haven't done it five or six years, but this year could be the year for the Minnesota Vikings. Second and six for the Bucks at their own 24. Bill in motion. And the ball carrier, Wilder, and Wilder running hard. Flags everywhere. Look, a very obvious face Whoa. mask from here. Yeah, but three flags, not one. It, it was beautiful. It was choreographed. They all threw it at the same time. Look like a definite face mask. I don't know why they all have to argue about it. Watch, I'll probably be wrong. I doubt it. They're just trying to figure out who did it. Defense, face mask, yank on the tackle, number 75, 15 yards, first down. And that was the argument. They wanted to see whether or not it was intentional or incidental. And they said he yanked too hard. 75, Bruce Clark is in the middle of your screen right over the center. Swims away, He's getting hit by two guys. He grabs it. You just see, there's no doubt. If you continue to hold on to it like that, they're probably going to call you for 15 yards. Well, that hurt. That hurt for me. Bruce Clark's getting double teamed, and see, so yanked him. When they think you yanked that hard, they're going to give you 15 yards every time because it might lead to a neck injury. On first down, Testaverde back to pass, complete to Carrier across midfield near the 37-yard line. Brett Maxey on the stop. Nice protection that time from the offensive line. You know, we, we talked to Perkins, and you, you've got a great talent in Mark Carrier. You have a great talent in really Ron Hall, your tight end. Bruce Hill's been playing extremely well after being injured for half the season last year, but he, he wants Tester Verde not to go for the home run every time. That time he had the tight end shorter, but it was a nice throw to Mark Carrier. First and 10 at the 37th of New Orleans. Ball Carrier, good. And Goo. And New Orleans wanted the fumble. The play was whistled dead. Good inside the 30. Very good getting a, a lot of extra time here today. We thought we'd see, uh, and we will see, Lars Tate. Expect to see Jeff Smith. Look here, and you know, I'll tell you what, that. Uh, that ball was definitely on his hip as he hit the ground. He might have gotten a break on that play. Again, the fumble cannot be created by contact with the ground. And now they're going to replay. So Kerry Good with the seven yard run on that. And the play will be reviewed to determine if, in fact, Kerry Good did fumble the ball. You know, James, I'm, I'm all in favor of instant replay, but. My God, we've had five or six instant replay decisions already here in the first half, and it really takes away from the rhythm and flow of a football game. 
But the player, at, as a player, you did get frustrated with that? Well, you, you always want the call if it goes in your favor. You take a look at Terry Good, 27. The, ball. the ball's out, but you see, the ball, he, he, still had, he still had possession when he hit the ground, but it fumbled out. And the replay official that the play stands. Second and three for the Bucks at the 30 of New Orleans. Flag on the play. As Wilder tried to leapfrog, and was tackled by Ricky Jackson, and a flag is on a play. Defense lining up in the new pool goal, number 97, five yards, it'll be a first down. That's Jumpy Gethers. So Tampa will pick up an extra five. Well, we're picking up the tempo here in this game. Defense playing hard. Here's a carry good again. One more time. He's coming through. He loses possession of the ball here. And Sam Mills is swilling catch him. But the ball does not come out until he hits the carpet. And so it's ruled inconclusive or he had possession. And Tampa Bay still has the ball. On second down, this is Good again with a big hole. And Kerry Good down to the 15 of New Orleans. An 11 yard run by Kerry Good, the rookie from Alabama, who's making the most of his playing time. Well, you have to give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a lot of credit here. You've got young players young offensive line and they're going against a very good defense but they are making holes for these running backs very good with some nice running there into the secondary but more importantly the Buccaneers are moving the ball every time New Orleans has scored they're moving the ball coming back first and ten at the 14 of the Saints Wilder the ball carry inside the ten to about the nine yard line. Five yard gain by James Wilder. Buccaneers are responding. Behind Gruber, their left tackle, Mallory, Grimes. Young offensive team, really. Young offensive team, period. And I think that Ray Perkins right now has to be very happy the fact that they are responding to the challenge. Well, the surprise element for the Bucks. Gary Good in, whom we thought would be in on passing situations only in place of Lars Tate. Three carries for 22 yards. Second and five for the Bucks. At the nine of New Orleans. Flags everywhere. This is Good again, and Good runs across for the touchdown, but there is a flag on the play. And the penalties against the Buccaneers. Offense, illegal motion, number 50. Five yards, still second down. And Ray Perkins very upset with that. Obviously, Dan Turk is the culprit. They call him for illegal procedure. Called it right away, so there's no doubt. Won't be a replay on this one. You can see how high he is. It's a good key. Everybody knows he's pulling on this one, and he no question about it. He's so anxious to pull, he get out here outside to run over a defensive back that he left a fraction of a second early. So he's second and ten for the Bucks from the 14. Tester Verde going up top, incomplete. So Tester Verde going for the touchdown play. The intended receiver was Kerry Good coming out of the backfield. Boy, was that a nice throw. Tester Verde puts a great touch on this football, and it goes right off of his shoulder pads. Another lesson for a rookie player, you've got to catch the ball with your hands and not rely on your body. Otherwise, that would have been seven points for the Buccaneers. And the stats won't reflect that when you look at Tester Verde's numbers, but one pass off the helmet of an intended receiver, Bruce Hill, and now off the shoulder pads of Goode. Third and ten. Tester Verde runs and drops the ball, but does recover it. So miscues for Tampa Bay inside the 20. Costing. More importantly, though, he, 
He saw he didn't force that pass. Was going to run out of the pocket. And even though he fumbled, he got the ball back. Gives the Buccaneers an opportunity to at least score. And the man that Ray Perkins, as you mentioned, calls Donald the kicker. Good with a 25-yard field goal before he now will be attempting a 35-yard field goal. It's up, and it's good. So Donald Igwe Buike with a 35-yard field goal narrows the gap. Tampa Bay trails by seven. And Tampa Bay still continuing to fight back. Bobby Bear still with the hot hand. Testa Verde, impressive numbers, yet to come away with a touchdown, though. Two big drops hurting him. Well, that really is. I, I think more impressive is the Buccaneer offense has responded after the Saints have scored the last two times to stay in this ball game. Donald, the kicker, at the one-yard line is Atkins. And Atkins across the 20. Still on his feet to the 27-yard line. So Gene Atkins. Gives the Saints good field position with a nice return. We'll be back in just a moment. Saints leading by seven in the second quarter and uh, very well-known and well-liked former Saints up in the broadcast booth for the Saints. Archie Manning, former yeah. quarterback. You know, I, I played against Archie. He, he likes it up there because he doesn't get beaten up like he used to when he was with the Saints. And he wishes that Bobby Bear's line was the line he had when he was playing here. Bear with the Saints. First and 10 at their own 28-yard line. This is Ruben Mays who reverses field. Mays to the 40. And Ruben Mays with the first down run to about the 43-yard line, a 15-yard run by Ruben Mays. And what a pretty, pretty run this is. This is a counter, counter play. It's intentional to change field. Watch this block. <laughs> Hebert doesn't even have to block the first guy because Winston Moss falls down. And Ruben Mays has plenty of opportunity to run behind the big lead blocking of his quarterback, Bobby Hebert. I like the fact that Hebert was out there. Oh, he intimidated the linebacker on that one. First and 10 at the 43 of the Saints. Hebert, play action. Looking for Hayward. Looked to be a minute mix-up on a play that time, and Hayward down on the field, and Bear talked about the fact that he's had to work with Hayward to understand some of the plays. And we talked to their offensive coordinator, and they said sometimes a, a rookie just runs wherever he wants to run, and we try to go along with the program, but that time it looked like the screen was not supposed to develop quite at the middle of the field where big number 34 ended up that time. I think Archie Manning uh, saw a few of those plays in his day. And there's Jim Henderson. And look who's <laughs> next door. Although he's a little short of me, folks, he yeah. loves to hit and still hit. stand up. <laughs> Second and 16 for the Saints at their own 37. Hayward in motion. Hayward with plenty of time goes to Mays out of the backfield. And Mays up near the first down marker. A 16-yard run by Ruben Mays. One of the problems with the Buccaneers is a lack of a pass rush. You see Winston Moss at the bottom of your screen with a three-man rush and a linebacker. Hebert is getting some pressure, but my God, he still has time to throw it, drop it off to his last available receiver, Ruben Mays, who then makes the most out of a bad situation. Comes close to getting the first down. Just one yard shy to be exact. Third and one. All at the 48 of Tampa. This is Hayward. Flag on the play. Hayward got the necessary yardage, but there is a flag. And it looked to me that Buccaneers lined up off sides on that play. And they're pointing it. Bronco Someone. Defense, number 90. Lining up in the neutral zone. Offside. Five yards. First down. You could tell way up here. He definitely lined up in that neutral area prior to the snap of the ball. Those are young mistakes. Those are the kind of mistakes you just can't make consistently if you're going to win a ball game. That was Ryan Holmes. 
Not particularly young. Fourth year player out of Washington. He's been around long enough. But you're right. Yeah, he's not young on this team. First and ten for New Orleans. At the Bucks, 43. 505 remaining in the half. Saints lead it. 13-6. Abair. Play fake. Ty Hayward out of the backfield. And the head, Iron Head, gets up near the first down marker. And he's a load to bring down. You will. One of the problems you have as a linebacker, you're used to taking on 190 to 210 pound running backs. This boy is much, much bigger, and he keeps driving those legs, and you better gang tackle that guy because he'll just keep on running. Nine yard gain, second and one. This is Hayward again. And Hayward right into the middle of the pile. Was it enough for the first down? And it was. He's a refreshing character, a lot of fun. Well, he really is, and I think that, you know, a lot of people talked to him before he was drafted that he was a possible troublemaker. He's been anything but here with the Saints. He's been very refreshing. It's great to have a young rookie who makes a contribution, but also has a good spirit with him. First and 10, Moe Hill in motion. At the 32 of New Orleans, make that Tampa. This is Dalton Hilliard. Hilliard, with the shake and bake moves, he can create yardage where there appears to be none. Dalton Hilliard, gain of three on a play. You know what, I hate to see that. If I'm a defensive back, a defensive player, the running back gets up smiling. Now, you have a lot of fun on the field. I mean, there are a lot of funny things that go on, but you know, I, I hate to see a guy smiling after you hit him. I mean, that doesn't tell me a lot. Good game coming up next here on CBS, San Francisco and Seattle. Both upset last week. Second and seven at the 29 of the Bucks. 304 left in the half. Abair to Hilliard. Flag on play. Hilliard gets down to the first down marker, but their flags on the play. Ricky Reynolds on the stop. We've heard from so many people that Dalton Hilliard is one of the toughest, if not the toughest, to bring down. And we got an indication as to why. He can cut on a dime. Well, he can. And Reuben Mays, the same thing. Offense, number 80, number 63, Holy. Still be second down, 10-yard penalty. 63 is Brad Edelman, seventh-year player out of Missouri. Look at Brad Edelman, number 63, left guard, running a counter play. And quite frankly, I don't see what the referees see. I think they must have been calling it on someone else because Brad Edelman's in the line, interior line, doesn't really have an opportunity to hold. That penalty makes it second and 17 for the Saints. Flag on a play, Hebert looking, and it's incomplete. Ball thrown short, intended receiver was Eric Martin, but there is a flag on the play. We're seeing a lot more of the yellow flags than uh, I'm sure either coach would like to see. Defense lining up in the neutral zone. Number 90, offside, still second down. Well, I guess Holmes didn't learn on the last third down. Ten yards against the offense, five yards against the defense. And you know Perkins has got to be oh, frustrated. Yeah. You know, we talked to talked to Ray Perkins. He said, I want some crazy guys. I don't have them. You take a look at 90 there. Ron Holmes, and again, he's lined up. His hand is even with the ball. Second and 12 for the Saints at the 34 of Tampa. Hebert to pass. Looking for Martin, and it's incomplete. Eric Martin on the cover that time. Ricky Reynolds and Harry Hamilton in on the action. Now, Gary, exactly what is offsides or in the neutral zone? That's a James, I've been on 
you cannot line up anywhere within the width of the ball if you're a defensive player. And I think we saw the last two times Ron Holmes. Of course, all defensive players are eager to get as close as you can, but you've got to be able to have some sense of where you are on that line. That's something they learned from early on. Out of the shotgun, A Bear on third and 12. A Bear. And although the pass is complete, A Bear looked to be in the grass at that time. Kurt Jarvis. And that is Kurt Jarvis's first sack and only the second sack for Tampa Bay this year. The other sack coming by way of Ron Holmes. Take a look from the end zone here and good pressure by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Holmes from the outside, Jarvis on the inside. Good coverage by your secondary and no question that he's in the grasp as he tries to throw this and does for a completion that will not count. So Kurt Jarvis's sack, second year player out of Alabama, forces a punting situation for the Saints. Brian Hansen, the punt. It's a high one away, and it's fair caught by Bobby Futrell. A 32-yard punt by Brian Hansen, and the Bucks, with 1.59 left, will start at their own 10. Coming up at halftime, Brent Herb and Dick Buckus with scores and highlights. And Gary, I'm sure you remember the great L.A. teams of the 60s and 70s, which were built around defense and was called the fearsome foursome. But now the offensive line is also the talk of L.A. And Dick Butkus takes a look at these new stars, the fearsome fivesome. That'll be coming your way at halftime. NFL today in New York with Brent Musburger. First and ten for the Bucks. And Goog, the ball carrier, stopped by Tony Elliott and Sam Mills. What Tampa Bay has to do right now started from the 10-yard line. They don't want to make any mistakes that would lead to turnovers and possibly some cheap points prior to the half for the New Orleans Saints. But if they can get some field position, they still have three timeouts left. They can start trying to get downfield and score before the end of the half. Brings up a second down. Ball marked at the 14, second and seven. Testaverde looking for carrier. And a great play. Give the credit to Reggie Sutton. Reggie Sutton. Replacing Waymer today at that left corner position. And he's playing as though he is not going to give up that position. Again, we talked about you don't want to throw an interception. And that ball hung in the air for a while. That was a long out. And who's had a slew of off-field problems. Reggie Sutton wants to play well today. See a great break on the ball here. And Reggie Sutton. Again, you don't want to make those mistakes. It might give great field position to the Saints. Take a look. That's a guy who... I, yeah, give me some high fives. Give me that skin, Van. I'm going to stay in here. Kind of like that starting position. Third and seven for the Bucks. At their own 14, inside handoff to Wilder. And Wilder up near the 20-yard line. A six-yard gain. It looks to be close enough for the first down. And it may be close enough for a measurement. You see the time remaining in the first half, 1-10. Bucks trail, 13-6. Again, isn't it amazing? Yeah, hold the ball there. You think he really just fell right at that spot? But they don't have to worry about any wind blowing the ball in here. That's amazing. Game of inches, but sometimes you've got to question those abilities of the referees to spot that ball. Whoa. Made it by the nose of the football. First down. Buccaneers don't care. They got the first down. They don't care how close it was. Get some breathing room now with a minute 10 to go in the first half. And most importantly, I think, for them, three timeouts. And have not been outplayed significantly at all by New Orleans. So they're down by a touchdown. Kerry Good had an opportunity to catch one. They played very well, but I think... Very impressively, they've come back every time that the Saints have mounted the charge. They've responded in a positive way. And the offensive line of the Bucks has been doing the job so far through the first half. First and 10 for Tampa Bay at their own 20. 
This is Kerry Good. And Good up to the 25 yard line. A five yard gain banged hard by Vaughn Johnson and Sam Mills. Good, five carries for 30 yards. Good first half for him. There's a timeout on the field with the score New Orleans 13, Tampa Bay 6. Big doubleheader Sunday here on CBS coming up at halftime. Brent Musburger, Irv Cross, and Dick Butkus will bring us up today with scores and highlights. And that L.A. Rams feature is on the offensive line. Well, I'll tell you what, people don't realize they have a lot of guys every year going to the Pro Bowl, but with Eric Dickerson leaving, it's only highlighting how good they really are because they're continuing to get big yardage for their running backs. Story has been their defensive line as well this year. Second and five for the Bucks. This is James Wilder. And Wilder fighting and clawing his way across the 30 to the 31, a six-yard gain by James Wilder. Enough for the first down. Brett Maxey in on the stop. Well, Saints defense doesn't mind it. They're going to give some uh, easy yardage if you want to run the clock out. And it looks as though that's what Tampa Bay is going to do. If I was Tampa Bay, I'd be very pleased. They're down 13-6. They've had some opportunities, but they've played very well and very hard. And, and that's the end of the first half with Tampa Bay trailing to the Saints. Donald Igwe Buike will be kicking off to the Saints. And taking at the six yard line is Mel Gray and Gray across the 25 to about the 27 yard line. So Mel Gray doing a good job with that return. Bobby Abair is back at the helm for the second half. You see his numbers in the first half. 8 of 12, 62 yards, and a touchdown pass to Mo Hill, a five-yard one on the Saints' first possession of the game. At their own 27, first and 10 for the Saints. This is Hayward. for about a nine-yard gain. So Craig Ironhead looking good. Right up the gut. Hayward's going to go. Look at the center of your screen. You get good, good blocking, but he just breaks some tackles there for extra yardage. Again, he's 260 pounds, and those Tampa Bay linebackers have got to get a little bit lower. You cannot arm tackle that kind of fullback. Second and one. Hayward and Hilliard in the backfield. This is Hayward in motion. Hilliard, the ball carrier. And Dalton Hilliard. Little or no gain. Looks to be awfully close. He can make a three-yard lateral run look awfully exciting. He's got great uh, lateral acceleration. They're going to try to go for the measurement here. That time he went against an eight-man front. He brought the free safety up, went in almost to do like a bare defense and try to stop that run. And Dalton Hillier gives the Saints a first down. You know, when you have two gifted backs like Hillier and Mays, they can really wear you down. Gilkenberg with a nice block and didn't have anywhere to go, but they avoided one man to even get to that point. First and 10 at the 38 of the Saints. Bear going up top, looking for Perryman, and he overthrows it. Gary, you mentioned Hilgenberg, a football family to say the least, a well, family played, affair. Well, I played with his brother in Chicago. He came in, he's playing right guard, played the center position last year. You look at the hammer in Hilgenberg. His father, Jerry, Wally played with the Vikings during all the Super Bowl years. Joel's here with the Saints. And Jay's an all-pro center with the Bears. And those guys are the only ones who play catch at Thanksgiving through their legs. No one sees one another. <laughs> Second and 10. From the 38 of New Orleans, Hillier. And Hillier. The ball comes loose, but it appears the play was whistled dead. Hillier with a two-yard gain. Will bring up third and eight. Winston, Winston Moss, number 57, did a great job that time.
keeping what he's supposed to do to the right of your screen. He's going to take on the pulling guard, stuffs him, makes the play inside on Dalton Hilliard. That's the kind of play you have to have from your outside linebackers. And really, quite frankly, the Buccaneer defense has played very well, played very well in that first half. Four wideouts in on third and eight from the 40. Bear, and it's complete. Enough for the first down, so Bobby Bear delivers the first down pass to the rookie, Brett Perryman. Tampa Bay Buccaneers just drop back into a zone in the middle of your screen, number 80. Perriman coming in from the outside, finding the hole in the zone. I tell you, if you have protection, Bear is going to beat that all day long. Ball at midfield, first and 10 for the Saints. Just underway in the third quarter. Saints lead it, 13-6. Bear with time to Hilliard out of the backfield. Dalton Hilliard, although only 5'8", 204, Sidney Coleman and Eugene Marv did not have an easy time bringing him down. You know, we talked about the Hilkenberg, but how about number 67, Stan Brock? He also comes from a great football family. We've got the blocking Brocks. You see Stan there, been with the Saints since the 80. Brother Pete, just released this summer, center for a number of years with the Patriots. Willie with the Lions and his brother Ray had two tryouts with the Chiefs but never quite made it. But he's the old man on the offensive line for the uh, New Orleans Saints. Second and one for the Saints. Three wide outs in. Bear back to pass. Looking for Mo Hill. He's got him. And Hill caught it at the 29 before reversing field. You know, it's always interesting to see what a team does, what they did that 15-minute halftime. And I think Bobby Hebert got back to doing, or is getting back to doing what he does best. That is a quick drop and not going for too much, just finding the holes in the zone and being patient. He's done that extremely well. He's a top-rated NFC quarterback going into this game. First and 10 at the 30 of the Bucks. Saints marching. play to stop the action. Buccaneers way offside. Before the snap, we have an encroachment on number 90. It'll be five yards. third such call against him. Ron Holmes at the top of your screen, number 90, gets caught by the snap, and geez, he's so far offside, it's, it's not even funny. And, you know, you go against a veteran quarterback like Bobby Hebert, he's gonna be playing with his mind the rest of the afternoon with that snap count. Well, those days just happened. Last week, it was Dave Wehmer being burned badly. Ron Holmes, a lot of mental mistakes. First and five for the Saints at the 25 of the Bucks. Bear, the handoff to Hilliard. Hilliard looking for room inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line. Reuben Davis on the stop, pickup of one. And Jim Mora likes the possession drive here. About five minutes on this particular series by the Saints. Again, what this does starts to wear you out a little bit. Keep doing this the entire second half by the fourth quarter. Those white jerseys start moving a little bit slower. Walmart at the 24, second and four. 9.35 remaining in the third quarter. This is Hilliard. And Hilliard gets down near the first down marker. He showed just how quick he was in that. Tampa Bay lined up in the bear defense. Again, eight men within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Winston Moss came flying from the outside, got tripped up a little bit. Hilliard had the quickness to get outside of him to get some yardage. And 
And number 70 is Bill Conts for the New England make that the uh, New Orleans Saints declared as an eligible receiver. Three of seven on third down conversions. Third and one for the Saints at the 21 of Tampa Bay. Hayward. And Hayward is smacked hard by Reuben Davis, who met him right at the midsection. Did he have enough for the first down? Davis read that one all the way. I'll tell you what, that was just great play there. That was a great charge by the Buccaneer defensive line. All this is on third one, my God, it's so easy to get it. But the Buccaneer defense really swore it. Reuben Davis coming down from the left end position to really smack him. So Morton Anderson comes on for the field goal try. He's good. Two of two today. One from 28, the other from 41. This one is up. And it's no good. So Morton Anderson misses from 39 yards. And the rookie, Reuben Davis of North Carolina, give him the credit on that play as the Bucks trail by only six. This is the first field goal that Morton Anderson has missed inside the 40-yard line since 1986. So you feel as though it's Mr. Perfect, and well, I'll tell you, he's disappointed because he knows it was not a good kick for Morton Anderson. And the Bucks take over at their own 21. James Wilder, nowhere on the left side, tries to reverse field, nowhere to go there. Gene Atkins in on the stop. Red Maxey offering a little help. James Wilder tried to run to the left side. And boy, Johnson and Swilling said, no way, Jose, you're not coming this way. And he tries to cut back, but forget it. He doesn't have the speed, and well, he's just going to get smeared here. Gang tackle. Loss of one on a play, second and 11. From the Bucks 20, Testaverde to pass. And was it caught, or did it hit the ground? And the official signals no. The intended receiver, Bruce Hill, but the pass too low. Bruce Hill, who has, has had a great season so far, and see whether or not he catches this ball, and uh, there's no doubt about that one. Bounces it right in. Good for a shortstop, but not for a wide receiver. And he was open. <laughs> he was open, but Tester Verde just couldn't quite get him to him. They, they blitzed going on that play. Third and 11, Stephen Starring, Bruce Hill, receivers to the right. And they've got that penny defense in. From their own 20, Testaverde, he's sacked. Ricky Jackson. Check that, Jumpy Gathers. So Jumpy Gathers gives the Saints their second sack of the afternoon. We talked about that penny defense. This time they blitz really from the left side of your screen. This is really a covered sack. Gathers does a good job, but Tessa Verde just had nowhere to throw the ball downfield. And signaling for the fair catch. Mel Gray, and there is a flag on the play. A 32-yard punt by Ray Criswell. preliminary signal is against New Orleans. That could bring about an automatic first down for Tampa Bay. Post-possession foul on the receiving team, number 24 is holding. Ten yards, and there'll be a first down. And that was the key, post-possession foul. So when we resume, it'll be New Orleans' ball. Saints lead it 13-6, 701 remaining in the third quarter. 
monetary references to these defensive formations. We are familiar with the nickel and the dime, but Gary, what's the penny defense? They got three linebackers in the center of your screen, and they can go anywhere they want, line up hard to snap the ball, and create real problems for the offense to pick them up. And we'll come back and show that in just a second. On first down, this is Abair looking for Mo Hill. And it's wrestled away by Ricky Reynolds. So Ricky Reynolds gives Tampa Bay a momentum booster as he wrestles the pass away from Mo Hill. And that's the first New Orleans turnover of the afternoon. The field position was very important when you have two strong defenses, and both defenses are playing pretty well, but Ricky Reynolds gets a big break for the Buccaneers, and he took that ball away. We had in the first half, well, there was a case where the offensive defensive player were together, and the offensive got it because it was a tie. That time, again, there was a tie, but he ripped it away, away and was able to get control of it. Interception for the Buccaneers. Number one of the career for Ricky Reynolds, first and 10 for the Bucs at their own 46. This is Kerry Good and Good barely across midfield, gain of five on a play. Kerry Good, six carries, 34 yards, a rookie, as I mentioned, out of Alabama, playing well. Look at this interception. I don't know. Bobby Aver has thrown a deep out pattern. And Ricky Reynolds, 29, the left corner for the Buccaneers, makes a nice break on the ball, but again. Lonzel Hill had it. Ricky Reynolds wanted it more and took it away from him for the interception. Second and six. Carrier and Hill to the left at the bottom of your screen. This is Hill in motion. And the handoff once again to Good and Good to the 47-yard line. Gain of three. Kerry Good may not know was the SEC freshman of the year at Alabama. Atlanta has pulled ahead of the Cowboys by three. Philadelphia after a tough loss last week to Washington on top of halftime over Minnesota. Buffalo and Cincinnati surprise unbeaten teams. Or is an odd score there. Looks like a safety was involved. Third and four here. Bucks on the drive at their own 48. 531 remaining in the third quarter. Testaverde under pressure. Intended receiver was Bruce Hill, but Testaverde felt swelling coming at him and had to get rid of it. You know, we were talking about that penny defense. What makes it different is that you can have the same personnel in, and sometimes Swilling will line up as a down lineman, and then sometimes he won't. This time, Jackson was lined up on the left side of your screen. He's, he's standing up now, but he was lined up as a down lineman. He drops back in, and Swilling's going to come from the right side of your screen. Bruce Hill, hey, Bruce says, forget it, guys. I'm not going to take that stick. Brings up a punting situation for the Bucks. Criswell gets off a high one. And Gray, fair signals. And the Saints will start from their own 16, thanks to a 32-yard punt from Ray Criswell. An outside look at what has been the home of some of the greatest sporting events in the country, the Louisiana Superdome. Inside, we've got a sellout crowd and a good game on hand. Saints leading it only 13-6. Third quarter action, James Brown along with Gary Fensick. First and 10 for the Saints at their own 16. Hebert, complete to Eric Martin, and Martin hit instantly by Bobby Futrell. Gain of four on the play. We're coming to you live in New Orleans, inside the Superdome. And the Tampa Bay Bucks, trailing by only seven, have done a pretty good job, Gary, of keeping this crowd out of the game by and large. Playing with a lot of enthusiasm, this defense has really surprised a lot of people so far in this game. They are playing very physical. On second and six, this is Dalton Hilliard. He's got the first down plus a couple. Mark Robinson on the stop. When in doubt, rely on a big offensive line to make some holes and let Hilliard find the hole. <laughs> You've got some names to talk about there with the blocking Brocks and the hammering Hilgenbergs. 
I'll tell you one thing that they've done very well. Again, Brenner has been out the last couple of weeks. They've lost Steve Trapillo, Darren Gilbert, and that line is still doing a great job. First and 10 at the Saints 28. This is Hayward. And Hayward, the big, strong fullback, taking it across the 35. Gain of eight. Watch this offensive line. Steve Court at the center. Brock Hilgenberg, they're moving him off the line in scrimmage. And then, boy, again, Hayward, 260 pounds. No one touches him with the first five, and then you've got a wave rule. He loves to lead with his head first. Second and two. Hayward again. And Hayward, close to the first down. Reuben Davis on the stop. You know, so they're trying to get him into the ball game a little bit more. Last couple of weeks, they've been bringing him out on splits. And looks like right now, they're trying to integrate him a little bit more. They said, hey, we need two or three yards. We need to start wearing them down. And we're going to do that by giving it to the fullback and mixing it up by giving it to Mays and to Hilliard. But when we really want to start beating them up, right up the middle with the big guy. And Hayward beat him up for a first down. Saints. Had the ball marked at their own 38. 321 remaining in the third quarter. Saints on top, 13-6. Hayward split at the wide receiver position to the left. Hayward to John And Tice takes it for the first down. 18-yard gain. Eugene Marv, Sidney Colvin, rode him out of bounds. Well, John Tice is replacing Hobie Brenner. And this time they send everybody deep. Tight end just slides underneath and rambles across the middle. John Tice, 6'5", 250 pounds. Sure-handed receiver. Now they've got two tight ends in, two backs, and one wide receiver. First and 10 at the 44 of the Bucks. This is Ruben Mays. And Mays diving headlong to about the 42. Kurt Jarvis on the stop. You know, the last series they had a turnover. And I think now they're saying, look, what we do best is run that ball and eat up time. We don't need to pass the ball. We need to establish that run here start wearing them down, and that will then set up the play-action passes that will allow us to go where and when we want to play. Second and eight at the 42 of the Bucks. Hebert looking for Tice again, just beyond his outstretched hand. We'll bring up third down, third and eight with 137 left in the third quarter. One of the things that you don't talk a lot about, you talk about sacks, but you don't talk about hurries. And that time they blitzed some linebackers, forced Bear to throw that ball quick, make a quick decision. He couldn't quite connect with, with his tight end. Well, that's unusual for Tampa Bay. It's unusual, but looks as though it was effective. Third and eight, New Orleans. Only three of eight on third down conversions from the 42 of Tampa. And it's incomplete. Intended receiver is Robert Clark. Ricky Reynolds smothering coverage. You know, one of the differences this week on third down with four wide receivers is that for the first three weeks, they had Lonzel Hill working with Eric Martin. Now they've split him up. And Robert Clark comes inside, and Ricky Reynolds looks as though it was close, but he did a good job. And all he cares about is it wasn't called interference, and he runs off the field. Ryan Hansen, his only punt of the day, traveled 32 yards. He gets a high one away here. And a fair signal by Bobby Futrell. And an identical 32-yard punt by Bob Ryan Hansen. Tampa Bay will take over at their own 10. Ray Perkins trying to bring the Tampa Bay Bucks out of the losing doldrums. 
and gets a little family help from his son, Mike Perkins, the assistant video director, sitting high atop the dome, taking in the action for study purposes. First and 10 for the Bucks, deep in their own territory at the 10. James Wilder with the five yard gain up to the 15. And Mike Perkins is accustomed to some long work hours. Dad said he doesn't see him very often. Must mean he's working. He's also rooming with. Said he doesn't live at home with him anymore. That's why he says, thank God. He's also got the, one of his other sons involved, Tony Perkins. He was the artist for this year's Tampa Bay Buccaneers press guide cover. Family affair as well. Second and five for the Bucks at their own 15. Haven't heard a lot about the dome patrol, but this time you do, swilling from the left side of your screen, and then Vaughn Johnson with a delayed stunt comes in and gets the sack. They call him Meat. And I'll tell you what, he smelled the sack on that one. He's like a hungry dog after the ball carry. Third New Orleans sack of the afternoon. Third and 12 for the Bucks. At their own eight. They're gonna run out of time. Chester Verde signal for a timeout before the clock expired. That was a very alert, alert play by Testa Verde. The clock had run down to two seconds. And from 110 yards away, he was smart enough to call a timeout so they did not lose another five yards. And now they face a third and 12. I think you have to pass the ball, but you've got to be very careful. You've got to be smart and intelligent enough not to take a risk to lead to an interception, which would really give the Saints and this crowd probably more importantly what they want to do. And these guys, the Ooh. Dome Patrol. And I'll tell you what, Ricky Jackson, he's looking for that first sack of the day. He had four last week. And believe me, this defense is pumped up. And when you have this crowd inside screaming and yelling on your back, it also makes it very difficult for Chester Burney to bark out his signal. Third and 12 from the eight. And Bruce Hill on a pass from Vinny Testaverde gets the Bucks out of a deep hole. Big play by Vinny Testaverde. Gets good protection. They drop back into a zone, and he just hits his inside receiver on a seam pattern over the linebackers, well thrown. Bruce Hill makes a nice catch. Well, that is a confidence builder for the young quarterback. A 21-yard pass play from Testaverde to Hill gives the Bucks a first down at their own 29. Intended receiver again was Bruce Hill. Perkins really likes Bruce Hill. Well, Bruce Hill again last year. He missed over half the season. Mark Carrier picked up the slack. <clears throat> did a good job, but this time Bruce Hill going against the zone, trying to find the hole, finds it, but Testaverde just throws it a little out of his reach. With six seconds remaining in the third quarter, it's second and 10 for the Bucks from their own 29. And Rob Taylor looked to be the guilty offensive lineman. Flags on a play. Full start, number 72, offense. Before the snap, five yards, first, second down. You know, you get all geared up. Can't hear the crowd. You take a look at the right part of your screen. Rob Taylor, number 72, moves. <laughs> and even though he's moving quickly, he's going to make sure that that guy doesn't get to his quarterback even after. 
after he screws up. Second and 15. On the buck, 24. And Testaverde underthrows James Wilder. Two seconds left in the third quarter. Young quarterback tried to guide that ball. It was a simple little pass. One he throws every single day, but try to throw a dart rather than throw the pass and just relax and follow through. Kind of like a golf shot. And you have to get over some water onto the green and you're afraid to look at that water and instead of just taking a nice easy swing, you try to move the ball without swinging the club. Just a birdie, only a nine of 21 on the afternoon. Third and 15. Bruce Hill again delivers the Bucks out of a hole. And the Bucks end the third quarter on a positive note. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. New Orleans 13, the Bucks 6. Defensive pass interference, number 22 on the defense. First down. And Jake's. As, as much as I hate to admit it, being a former defensive back, Van Jakes is all over his back prior to this ball. Does a good job of trying to keep that right arm and right hand off of him, but I think he reached over and had contact prior to prior to the ability for the receiver to catch the ball. But you want an aggressive defensive back, and he was smiling afterwards. He's not gonna let that take away from his confidence. That's a Saints 43 on first down. Testaverde going up top. And the intended receiver was Mark Carrier. And Carrier was trying to prevent a Saints completion to Brett Maxson. Last year, Vinny Testaverde had a lot of success with the hook and goes against this secondary of the Saints. And he tried it that time, but Van Jakes didn't bite. Didn't bite on the uh, the hook move and just stayed comfortably back. Almost had an interception. You know, we said the, the heart and soul of the Saint defense for the linebacking core, but so far today, these cornerbacks and secondary played very well. Second and 10 from the 43 of New Orleans. The intended receiver was Bruce Hill, and it's incomplete. Let's check. In New York with Brent Musburger with this NFL Today report. James, the Minnesota Vikings have come back on the Eagles and they have taken the lead 17-14 from the shotgun on third down. Quarterback Wade Wilson, a good runner, blasts his way into the end zone. 17-14 Vikes back to James. All right, Brent. Pretty significantly on that, but Tommy Kramer is not in the ball game. Replaced by Wade Wilson. The important third down series for the Bucks. The Saints 43, third and 10. And Testaverde is in the grasp of Vaughn Johnson. Meet with the second sack, fourth total for the day for New Orleans. Left Saint, left Saint defense is challenging Testaverde and the Bucks now. They had one man who was deeper than five yards from the line of scrimmage, swelling from the outside. Delayed blitz by Vaughn Johnson, and that's what he did last sack. I think he's going to have to split that with someone else on that same defense, so I can't see right now. Criswell. three-yard punt. And Mel Gray with a 23-yard return. Saints will have it when we come back. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered draft beer is as real as it gets. Miller Brewing is the exclusive beer sponsor of today's telecast. Prudential Bait Securities rock solid market-wide. 
and by Dodge cars and trucks on the street or off the road. It's the new spirit of Dodge. 14-26 remaining in the contest. First and 10 for the Saints at their own 32. Saints lead at 13-6. Hayward, the ball carry. And it takes a slew of white shirts to bring him down, led by Winston Moss. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers trailing by only Seven points in this game. Who'd have thunk it? With them coming in down by 13 and a half, you like the performance of the secondary. I think both secondaries have really played well in the third quarter. There was no scoring, and uh, I'm surprised because uh, there's a lot of crowd noise here. The Saints had some opportunities, but the Buccaneer defense has really stiffened here in the second half. And this is supposed to be the story of the New Orleans defense, one that has only given up three points in fourth quarter action through the first three games. Bear back to pass on second down. Is stopped by Mark Robinson or he'd have been in the end zone. But there is a flag on the play. Illegal contact, defense, number 36, decline, first down. So the 20-yard pickup stands. Bobby Futrell, the right corner, hitting him. And Abair looks at the bottom of your screen first to try to hit someone. Montel Hill at the top in the slot is the guy he eventually goes to. Both both guys go for the ball, and well, they're lucky that Mark Robinson was there. Otherwise, Lonzel Hill is going to walk in for a touchdown. On first down, this is Dalton Hilliard. Hilliard down to the 43-yard line of Tampa Bay, a gain of three on the play. You know what they've been doing? They've been draw, using draw plays with Hilliard in the inside and then dive plays with the big guy, Hayward. Start softening you up. You start dropping back for pass. You get a draw play, and then you get a quick hit from a 260-pound fullback. You better be ready because he's really been getting a lot of extra yards just on second effort. Second and seven. At the 43 of the Bucks. Hebert looking for Craig Hayward, and it's over his hand. A lot of action taking place around the NFL today. Let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York. Well, James, we've had a very unfortunate incident in the Dallas-Atlanta game. Chris Miller, the delightful young quarterback for the Falcons, is tackled for a safety in the end zone. He suffered an ankle injury. He's been taken off the field on a cart. He will go for x-rays, and so far we do not know how serious the injury is. It made the score 20 to 16. Back to James. All right, Brent, and that certainly hurts because the veterans on the Falcons team looked up to that young player. By that, they upset the San Francisco 49ers with them last week. Third and seven here, all at the 43 of Tampa Bay. And Abair gets away with a wounded pass, but there's a flag on the play. You know, they're trying to decide right now whether that ball was deflected, so you can't have pass interference after that. Hebert hey claiming no way. Of course, all the Buccaneer defensemen are saying that ball was deflected. It was ruled defensive pass interference, but the ball was tipped by a defensive man. There's no defensive pass interference. Well, here's what he's talking about. Bobby Abair getting a lot of pressure from the Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense coming in, giving everything, and just as he releases the ball, looks like Mark Robinson deflects the ball, and that takes away the opportunity for this wounded duck to become pass interference for Lonzel Hill, who was definitely held by number 40, Donnie Elder. I think the fans are complaining because they think that Abair took a, a shot to the head on that. Did you see how high Chris Washington got leaping over at Bear? Chris Washington gave it everything he had. 
he went crazy, and that's what Perkins needs. He needs some crazy guys to give up their bodies. So that brings up a punting situation for the Saints. Brian Hansen will be punting back deep for the Bucks. Bobby Futrell. It's a high, good one. Futrell, Fair catches it at the 11. So a 32-yard punt by Brian Hansen. No return by Futrell. The Bucks will have it when we come back. Market Ryan of Rockin' L.A. Big loss in that game there. Atlanta's Chris Miller starting quarterback out with an ankle injury. Taken to the locker room for x-rays as Brent Musburger just reported. Second and eight for the Bucks. Testa Brady trying to throw from his own end zone. And there's a flag on the play. Intended receiver is Mark Carrier. And the Bucks continue to hurt themselves. Well, Ricky Jackson blitz and Frank Warren from the left end position came free as a bird. Offense, number 72, Ulrich, declined. Third down. Well, that's two in a row for Rob Taylor that have been declined. It looks like Frank Warren is getting the better of Rob Taylor. Rough day for Rob Taylor and Ron Holmes of the Tampa Bay Bucks. Buffalo continues to win. Look at this. 12 to 7. Miami just having real problems getting their offense unloaded this year. Indianapolis trying to notch their first one of the season. Third and eight. Bucks on their own 13. And Mark Carrier holds on to the ball for the first down after a good hit by Reggie Sutton. Well, Ray Perkins is very pleased with his young group of receivers. Mark Carrier, the big man last year. Bruce Hill so far this year, but look at that stick. Manages to hold on to the ball for a very important first down. Boy, I'll tell you, you lose the ball there, and field position at the 50 would have been for the Saints offense. At their own 26, first and 10 for the Bucks. 11-11 remaining in the contest. Bucks trailing by seven. Wilder and James Wilder across the 30 to about the 32 yard line six yard pickup by James Wilder that'll bring up second and four Boston trying to put the lid on want to go to the playoffs magic number is four for Boston with eight games remaining Detroit trying to hang in and the same with Milwaukee mathematically still in it Second and four for Tampa Bay at their own 32. Hill in motion. Wow. To the 36. Should be enough for the first down. Tony Elliott on the tackle. You know, one of the things that both Tampa Bay and the New Orleans Saints do is change up frequently with their front three and that 3-4 defense to keep them fresh. If you're a defensive player, you, you never really want to come out. But it also prevents the other team from really getting a feel for what you're doing because they always have fresh troops running against you. And that was enough for the first down, so the Bucks keep their drive alive. It'll be first and 10. Ball marked at their own 36. And in that American League East baseball race, we need to correct the score. Boston on top five to nothing, top of the sixth. And again, the magic number there is four for the Red Sox. Good in motion. And Testaverde going for Ron Hall, and he's got him complete for the first down in New Orleans territory. A 20-yard pass play from Testaverde to Ron Hall, and that's Hall's first catch of the day. I'll tell you what, you talk about a 
a big play, the tight end run all coming into your inside, and that's thrown right over Ricky Jackson. Nice catch, takes a hit from the safety, Brett Maxey, holds onto the ball, another second year player. All the receivers are in their second year. You've got a lot of young people on this team, and right now, you better believe the New Orleans Saints know they're in a ball game. 12 remaining. First and 10. This is Kerry Goo. Goo up near the 40. A flag on the play. Goo has really been running well, Gary. And the Bucks have really been hurting themselves. Perkins agrees. Offense number 69. Holding. 10 yards. Still first down. That's the rookie, John Bruin. Ray Perkins is uh, very impressed with this rookie from Tennessee. Says he's going to be a great player. Not a good one, but a great one. To be quite honestly, he has a lot of confidence in his entire offensive line, which is read, led by uh, Randy Grimes at center. But again, you don't want to put yourself in these first and long, second and long situations. This is first and long, first and 20 to be exact. Testa Verde going up top for Bruce Hill. He's got it. Bruce Hill. Tackled by Reggie Sutton, but takes it to the 21-yard line. A 35-yard pass play from Testa Verde to Bruce Hill. Bruce Hill barely in your frame in the slot. Just a seam pattern, a go pattern. He's got man-to-man -man coverage. Beats Reggie Sutton there. And right now, the Saints defense is starting to feel shades of deja vu because Vinny Testaverde had a great day against them a year ago. This is a Saints defense that has limited the opposition to only three points in the fourth quarter through the first three games. First and ten from the Saints 21. This is Goode. And Goode runs it for his own man, James Wilder, and is driven back by a horde of black and gold. Well, you get inside the 20 of any defense, and everybody starts stiffening up. And that time, the left side of that line, led by Ricky Jackson, strung it out, and boy, they swarmed him. He had nowhere to go. He ran into his own man. Boy, I've been very impressed with the play selection. Running left, running right, setting up some nice play action passes. Vinny Testaverde has shown very good discipline and composure. One of the things that Ray Perkins, again, is very confident that he will develop as he continues into his career. Second and six from the 17 of the Saints. Testaverde stumbles and still throws it away. Throws it out of bounds. So Testaverde tripped. Boy, that's a smart play. Even though he threw it to the band member, no one was near him, and even though he went down, he was able to throw it away from his knees out of bounds. It's no easy thing to do. Look here at the center screen. Testaverde just trips on his center and throws it wisely out of bounds. It's a heads-up ball play there. Otherwise, they would have lost yardage on the play. Saints would have got a cheap deep uh, sack. Perkins says that Testaverde is getting smarter with the experience. Showing some composure. 7 of 12 on third down. This is third and six from the 17 of New Orleans. And Testaverde has a pass almost picked off by Van Jakes. The ball was tipped. That'll bring up a field goal attempt by Donald Igwe Buike. Give Tony Elliott the credit for tipping the pass. You know, again, he's had good, good protection all afternoon by his offensive line. Tony Elliott tips the ball. It almost allows it to be intercepted by Reggie Sutton there. He just barely missed it. Of course, it's a field goal attempt. Big wave week eight, two of two in the field goal department. This one from 35, make it a 35-yarder. And it's good. So Big wave week eight with a 35-yard field goal. Draws the Bucks a little closer, 13 to 9. 
it has been a no frills defense by Tampa Bay. Isn't the case today? They put a lot of pressure on Abear. They may not have a lot of sacks, but Doug Graber said we've got to do something different. Made some mistakes opening day and played maybe a little more conservative than he wanted to. But today he's run the 46 defense. He's forced Abear into making quick decisions, and his secondary has really picked up the slack and done a good job of covering. Equay Puique. Fielded by Mel Gray at the 12. And Mel Gray, body slam. Give the credit to Jackie Walker. Good football game coming your way next week here on CBS. Big SEC matchup. Number 20, Florida, against number 7, LSU. Heisman Trophy candidate on display in this one coming up, Emmett Smith. He's going to be a great one. He really is. They're lucky they don't have to play with down here in Louisiana because they got those Tigers to contend with. I don't think they're allowed to take those Tigers on the road. And we've got a good one here, the first game of a doubleheader Sunday here on CBS Sports. New Orleans Saints fighting a scrappy and productive defensive unit from the Tampa Bay Bucks. First and 10, New Orleans at their own 25. Dalton Hilliard across the 30 to the 32-yard line, a seven-yard pickup by Dalton Hilliard. And, Gary, we have an update on Chris Miller, the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons that was injured in that game. It appears as if the injury is not quite as serious as first thought, only a sprained ankle. Good news for Falcons fans. More importantly, they're still winning that game by one point over the Cowboys. Second and three here. Saints 32. 6.09 remaining in the game. Hayward, the ball carry. Boy, is he strong. Up near the 35. A three-yard grind him out drive by Craig Hayward. One of the things the Buccaneers have done this series, they got four down linemen. And they're just challenging him and saying, look, we're ready. We know what's going to happen. You're going to try to run this clock out for the last six minutes of this ball game and take it down the field and not allow our offense to get the ball back. Hey, they're fired up. They're ready to go. Bring it on. Makes it 31. Saints, only three of 10. Third down conversion from their own 34. Hebert to Mo Hill. Enough for the first down plus. Mo Hill with the reception and dives across the 40 to the 42-yard line. He's having a heck of a birthday day today. Nothing fancy about this. And this is the beauty, of really, of their third-down offense. Hebert just takes what's given. Needs a few yards, safe possession pass to Lonzel Hill, who then tries to make the most of it, holds on to the football and gets the first down. Good numbers for Mo Hill on the day. Trying to catch up with Eric Martin. First and 10 at New Orleans, 42. Clock ticking away, 440 remaining. Handoff to Hilliard. And Hilliard looked to be tackled for about a one yard loss. They lined up in that 46 defense and it is very difficult to run. They've got eight guys right near that line of scrimmage. They're daring Hebert to try to pass against it. 69,000 plus here, seeing a surprisingly tough Tampa Bay defense. Coming up next here on CBS, the San Francisco 49ers against the Seattle Seahawks. And you know how loud it gets up in Seattle. Kingdom is one tough place to play. On second and 11, Hebert going up top for Mo Hill. And it's overthrown. Bobby Hebert looking for the home run ball. Well, again, daring him to throw, but Bobby Hebert, that's not his game. He doesn't want to have to go deep. His longest completion coming into this game was only 33 yards. He's a great possession passer, but you know that you have to try to go deep sometimes. He knows it as well, otherwise those cornerbacks start sitting on routes. You've got to go deep and keep them honest. Brings up a third and 11. Saints. At their own 41. Hebert. 
Gets it away and was in the grasp of Joel Hilgenberg. Did not hear a whistle. So the play stands as an incomplete pass. Great pressure by the entire front seven of Tampa. They're running stunts. They're coming. They're giving up their bodies. That's what you've got to do. And they've done a great job in stopping the Saints on third down today. And two trail. Bear catches it. A 39-yard punt. You know, the Saints came into this game number one on third down conversion in the NFC, and they have really struggled against this inspired Buck defense. You got to get into that huddle. You know, it's Jim Moore. I, I, had, I have a feeling that if the game gets any closer, he might start wearing those headphones. Take a look at that, that huddle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're young. They say, hey, guys, we can do this. We can win this ball game. They've got 336 to do it, and then Tampa Bay, first and 10 at their own 21. Going for Carrier. He's got him. Testaverde to Carrier. First down across the 40. Gene Atkins on the tackle. Nice catch. You know what I like about Mark Carrier? He, he catches the ball with his hands. You know, you go into that huddle right now, they go, guys, it's just not good enough to get close. we got to win this game to get some confidence. Tester Birdie looks at him all the way, and Carrier makes a nice catch with his hands, and Atkins has to come over and make the tackle. Four catches for 66 yards. Mark Carrier, strong afternoon for him. Trying to duplicate last year's numbers. On first down. Looks to be good, the ball carrier. You know, it's got to be fun for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They haven't exactly gotten great crowds in Tampa. Of course, you have to win before you start bringing them back. But, hey, they love this excitement. They like the people screaming and yelling. They like, there's nothing better to be away and to hear the crowd get quiet because you made a big play. Second and eight for the Bucs at their own 43. Testaverde. Pass nearly intercepted by Reggie Sutton. Sutton's had a couple of opportunities to intercept the ball today. It's his first start in place of Dave Wehmer. And oh, this one, boy, just didn't look it in. You can see why he wouldn't be a very good wide receiver. Boy, is he disappointed down to the ground. Ooh, you got to make those plays. Two minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the game. Tampa Bay trailing by four, 13-9. a nicely thrown ball by Vinny Testaverde. Bruce Hill, number 84, getting double teamed by the free safety and the cornerback. And he almost caught that football, just couldn't quite bring it in. You see the safety is double teaming him with the cornerback, and they get a hand in there and strip the ball away. Griswell coming on to punt. And the ball takes some Tampa Bay rolls down to the 13-yard line, a 44-yard punt by Ray Criswell. A doubleheader Sunday today and a doubleheader Sunday coming your way next week. The big one, the New York Giants against the Washington Redskins. And the Green Bay Packers will take on Tampa Bay. And that'll be followed by... Detroit and San Francisco. Detroit, a lot tougher team than people give them credit. And the Minnesota Vikings against Miami. And that all begins with the NFL Today coming your way at 12.30. Right here on CBS. Well, you've got the Buccaneers have two timeouts left. And you know they got a break because there's 2.04 left. They'll get a, an additional timeout and a two-minute warning. But they've got to stop them here. And they've got to stop them without a first down. Saints, first and 10 at their own 13. 
2-0-4 remaining in the game. Dalton Hilliard, the ball carrier, hit hard. And driven back. Give the credit to Eugene Marr. And we've hit the two-minute warning. Good ball game here. Saints leading it by only four. 13-9 here. Tampa Bay trailing by four, two minutes remaining in the contest. And today is Sunday, so that means it must be time for 60 minutes tonight. On CBS, everybody's favorite news magazine. That'll be followed by the presidential debate. Vice President George Bush and Governor Michael Dukakis. And then Murder, She Wrote. All that tonight on CBS. Second and 10 for the Saints at their own 13. Billiard, the ball carry. Rope and drop. Kurt Jarvis. Look at those guys, they're fired up. They can smell it. They know they have a chance if they can just stop them on this next down. If they can stop them and force the punt, Buccaneers will have a chance with good field position for one more try into that end zone. They only have one timeout left after that one. Doug Graber talking to Ray Perkins. What do you do if you're New Orleans Saints? Do you, you try to pass the ball for third and 13? Or do you rely on your defense? Even though the Buccaneers will have good field position, you rely on your defense to keep them out of the end zone. They need to score in order to win. Jim Moore said coming into the game, he nor his team would take Tampa Bay lightly. Here's reason why. Talk to Dan Hampton. He said the Bear defense would play well. They've held Green Bay to six points. Cincinnati trying to stay undefeated. Third and 12. Buffalo looks as old will. Saints only four of 13 on third down conversions at their own 13. When it comes down to it, it's Bobby A. Bear and his ability to throw the big third down clutch passes and for receivers like Lonzel Hill to make the catch. That's a big birthday catch, gives him a big first down and if they're gonna win the game today, it's gonna be because of clutch throws and clutch catches like that. Birthday numbers for Mo Hill, six catches for 78 yards. That one of the 17 yard variety. And New Orleans will operate first and 10 from their own 28 with 141 remaining in the game. You know, they have Eric Martin, who is leading all NFC wide receivers in receptions with 20 going into this game. And Montel Hill is showing that he's also a very gifted one. They have four ones they like a lot. Harriman, of course, being the rookie for Miami. Still to come on CBS, the 49ers against the Seahawks. And guess who will be going against his old teammates in that game? Jeff Kemp, quarterback in Seattle, going against his former mates from San Francisco. Replacing the injured Craig, you might say. Very important game. Ray Perkins can only watch the clock tick away. Well, he's not going to be disappointed with this game. I mean, you're always disappointed not to win. But you're not disappointed by the performance that both offensively and defensively what they gave him. <laughs> it looks as though uh, there won't be many plays left here, but you know, it's a clutch call, too, by the, the Saints. Went for the first down. They could have just handed the ball off and allowed their defense to come on the field on their side of the 50. Showed the confidence that they earned last year when they went to the playoffs for the first time in this franchise's history and the confidence they have in Bobby Abair, the top-rated quarterback in the NFC today. Well, it was a good... Good throw, but a really fine catch by Lonzel Hill. And a New Orleans Saints offense that's averaged 28 points a game coming into today's game with only 13 points all scored in the first half. And give a lot of the credit to the Bucks 
Well, this 48 where, seconds left in the game. Now this, one more snap, but this is where you just kind of give credit where credit's due. You shake hands afterwards. It was a very physical contest. I'm sure that we'll hear how much the New Orleans Saints respect this young Buccaneer team. And you can't overlook that fact. They don't have many veterans. They're young, they're green, they're going to make mistakes, but they didn't make many today. They played extremely well. A Buccaneer defense that came into today's game next to last in the NFC and 25th in the NFL gained a large measure of respect going against one of the most potent offenses in the NFL. And this play will do it. So the New Orleans Saints move to a mark of three and one, move their series lead against the Bucks to eight and three. And now make it six consecutive wins over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But Tampa, with enough to smile about in terms of their performance tonight, And stay tuned because we've got a good game coming up next second half of our doubleheader here on CBS. For Gary Fenson, this is James Brown saying so long from the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Once again, the final score, New Orleans 13, Tampa Bay 9. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after these words from your local station.